Okay, Hess's law tells us that we can do changes of reactions, whether we do that reaction in one step or we break it up into multiple steps, it's the same. But how did we get these values for the change of enthalpy, for example, um, to start with? Well, we can do that from tabulated values of what are called the standard enthalpies of formation or the standard molar entropy for compounds. And you can look these up in thermodynamic tables for all sorts of different materials. Um, if you know what these are for the individual compounds, and then you've got a reaction that has these compounds in them, you can figure it out for them. Okay? A couple things to remember. Delta H, so this is the terminology, delta H with the zero, that means the change, delta's change, H is enthalpy, and then the zero up top means that that's happening under a very specific set of conditions. That means for the formation of one mole of the compound from its constituent elements, right? And so that's happening at one bar or one atmosphere. And usually it happens at a specific temperature. If, if it's not stated what temperature that's at, then you can assume that it's typically at 25C. But these are also listed at lots of other temperatures, and I'll show you why in, in, uh, shortly. If you're calculating delta H zero, you should know that it is always going to be equal to zero for elemental substances and homonuclear diatomic molecules like O2, N2, and so forth, right? Why is that? Because you're talking about the change in energy to form something from what, how it exists in its standard state. But all those things exist as those things in their standard state. Like in, in this room right now, the standard state of oxygen molecules is just an O2 molecule. So to create an O2 molecule, you already started with O2 molecules, so there's no change in energy, enthalpy. There's no change in enthalpy, so it's just going to be zero. But it does have an entropy value. So S naught, um, but it does have an enthalpy. So S naught here, that's defined as the entropy content of one mole of substance. So even though oxygen exists as oxygen at room temperature, it doesn't have an enthalpy because you're not forming it from something else it still does have an entropy, right? It has some degree of disorder. So let's do an example. Let's say we'd like to calculate the change in enthalpy and the change in entropy for this reaction from nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen gas to form ammonia, okay? So how do we do this? Whenever you're calculating the change of a reaction, we're gonna use this formula. The change, right, the change in enthalpy under these conditions, right, for the reaction, that's going to be equal to the sum Right, so that's the summation symbol of the products. So we're going to calculate these for the products. And then we're going to subtract from that the sum of the change in enthalpy or the formation enthalpies of the reactants. So for us, our product is ammonia gas, and there's two moles of it, so we need to multiply two times the formation enthalpy for ammonia. So here's the formation enthalpy for ammonia. It's negative 46.1 kilojoules. So we're gonna do two multiplied by negative 46.1 kilojoules per mole. Okay. And we're gonna subtract from that the formation enthalpy for nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen multiplied by one, hydrogen multiplied by three. Okay. Well, what is the formation of nitrogen? We just said that since nitrogen exists as a homonuclear diatomic molecule, its formation enthalpy is just zero. So it's gonna be one times zero plus three times, hydrogen is the same as nitrogen, so they are both going to be equal to zero. So this whole term just goes away to zero, okay? Therefore, the formation enthalpy is just going to be two times 46.1. So that's going to be, what, 92.2 negative 92.2 kilojoules per mole. That's our, for, our change in formation for this reaction. And since there's only one product, that's the formation enthalpy for two moles of NH3, okay? Now we can do the same thing with entropy. The change in entropy for a reaction, the change in entropy under standard state conditions is going to be equal to the summation of the entropy values of the products minus the summation of the uh, standard molar entropies of the reactants. So just like before, we're into protosmotics minus reactants. In this case, uh, the entropy of NH3, that's gonna be equal to 
right? And that's times two moles. And that's going to be subtracted by um, three moles of H2, so 191.61 plus one times 130.68. Okay, so let's add those up. So when I punch those into my calculator, I get a value of negative 320.61. So equals negative 320.61. Uh, the units on this one are joules per mole Kelvin. So this tells us that the overall entropy change is negative, right? Think about it. We went down in entropy. Why? Because we started out with one mole of gas plus three moles of gas. So we had four moles of gas and we condensed that into two moles of gas. So that became more ordered, right? Because it became more ordered, we know that entropy is not driving this reaction. What must be driving it? Well, it's the enthalpy. We calculated the change in enthalpy for this reaction. It, it, it is in fact exothermic. So in this case, we have a great example where entropy says don't do it, but enthalpy says do it, and so it decided to do it. How do we reconcile and know which one's going to dominate, though? We can calculate it, or we have a new term which takes into account both of those. We'll talk about that in our next video.